What's going on everybody? Welcome back to my channel once again. So today we're going to be taking a look at the Sovel SV04, which is an IDEX 3D printer, which means basically independent dual extruders. So there are two of them, but I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to get this opened up. We're going to take a look at this and let's see how this performs. All right, so here's everything that it comes with. There's really only two main pieces to put together other than the spool holder and a couple other pieces, but it does come with a nice manual that actually tells you the screws you're going to need, which ones, and how to put it together. As you can see right here, the screws are labeled. It does come with two rolls of filament, a blue and a white, but it also comes with the power cord and everything you're going to need to get this fully assembled. So I'll go ahead and I'll get this all put together and we'll be back right after that. All right, so I got this all put together. Now this didn't take long at all. This probably only took me about 20 minutes. There were just a couple screws on each side. I had to mount the touch screen to the front with just two screws and screw in the filament holders up at the top and then plug in all the cables, and that was about it. So that didn't take long at all. So all that's left to do is to turn this on, which there's a switch right on the right-hand side. And then we'll get this all leveled, and we'll try our first print. So here you can see the interface. You have print, dual mode, temp, settings, and then it shows you the temperature of each nozzle and the bed. So you can go into settings, and I can go to move it around if I want to. I can also go into level it, and this will actually auto home this. So I'll go ahead and I'll follow the steps that they have in their outline. So first I will click the auto Z line and wait for the printer to auto leveling the X axis. So we'll click on that and we'll wait. So now I'll go ahead and I'll click on the auxiliary leveling and you have the five boxes, one, two, three, four, and five. So it says to click on number two first. So I clicked on that, and now it's over in the number two spot. And just using a piece of paper, I can measure this out to make sure that it's snugly aligned. And if not, there's little knobs underneath that I can adjust. So once that is leveled, I can go ahead and click the home button place a piece of paper under and adjust the Z to where this is going to fit just slightly underneath it. So right about there. And make sure to click save. So once that's completed, you just go to measuring, click on that, and it will run through all 16 points So now I got the filament all loaded in, so I'm just going to run a calibration test first. And I inserted their SD card, which is right here. I'll go into print. I'll go to calibration. And I'll hit print. So that calibration has finished, and it's kind of hard to tell, but... You can see right here, the blue actually doesn't align quite enough with the white. So we're gonna have to move that up and over here, the blue and the white, they're offset just a little bit so as well. So I'll have to move that over also. So I adjusted the calibration, re-ran the print, and now you can see that this lines up a lot more evenly. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna run a test print first and we'll just go into print. And let's just click on, how about dual pepperoni? And let's print that one and we'll see how that works. So 
So this pepperoni pizza has finished. And just by looking at it here, I think it looks pretty good. There are some spots that maybe just kind of aren't the greatest, but this was just the first test print. I will get this removed from the build plate. And taking a look at this, this isn't the greatest print that I've seen or done, but overall it's not too bad. It does look like that it's still off a little bit. So I'm gonna run a different calibration test just to see if that makes any kind of a difference and just kind of see how it does. So I'll get this all cleaned up, removed, and then we'll try their calibration cube and go from there. So here's the 3D cube that it printed, and I think it turned out really well. So to me, it looks like the calibration is pretty much spot on at this point. So I'll go ahead and I'll run a few more tests on this machine, and then we'll be right back and talk about this right after that. Okay, so I ran all these tests that you saw, and overall, I think this worked really well. Now, the pizza is probably, to me, the worst one, and I'm not sure if it's the model itself that is faulty, but you can see kind of where it oozed a little bit, and it's not really the greatest. Now, this could be an issue with the model, and maybe it's supposed to be like this because it's a pizza, and it's supposed to, I don't know, look like cheese is melted or something. I have no idea. But when I ran these other ones, I think these turned out really well. And even the calibration cube that looked to be spot on. So I really didn't see an issue with that whatsoever. So it might just be something with the pizza. And this took, I don't know, nine hours to print that. So it took a while to do. This one right here, this was just a little wine holder. And as you can see, I didn't use any support, so that could be why some of these parts look a little messed up and there's a little oozing right there. On the other side, though, it looks pretty much normal, so not quite sure, but it could be because of the supports. So let's go over a few things that I really like and a few things that I dislike about this machine. And I'll start with the things that I dislike. So first off, my biggest pet peeve, I think, to me is that the SD card, for whatever reason, it's not just this machine, they always seem to put it in upside down. And to me, it should go like this, but for whatever reason, you have to put it in upside down. Not the biggest deal in the world, but you don't really know that until you try and do it. So another thing that I dislike is that I don't like having to use the knobs to level the bed underneath. Now, a lot of machines have gone away from that, but this is one of those that did not yet. So you do have to manually adjust these knobs to get this leveled. And this did take quite some time going back and forth with a piece of paper, adjusting it, all four corners, doing it a couple times just to make sure that you got it right. And to me, it's just time consuming and it takes a little while. It works, but like I said, it takes some time to do. Another thing that I dislike about this machine is that the right extruder doesn't have the BL touch on it, only the left side does. So you do have to manually go in, move the knob and adjust these screws to make it level completely if it's not already perfect. So there is some adjustments that do need to be made once you do get this all assembled and put together. I think the only other thing that I dislike about this machine is some of the placements of the ports. Now you have the SD card that goes right here in front. And if you wanted to hook it up to your computer, you can right here. But I think the placement of it could be better because you'll have to have a cord coming out and maybe it's run underneath. But when this bed's moving, that cord's gonna be in the way possibly. So I think it could be better if it was either off and to the side, maybe by the touchscreen, or even off where the on off switch and power supply is. So I'll go over some of the things that I really do like about this machine now. And first off, let's just start with the prints. 
I think they came out really well. I think some of them could be a little bit better, but I could just need to adjust some of the settings. And for the majority of these, well, for the pizza and the cube, I did just go off of their model and what they had their settings at. And even when I was looking at the screen, it was while it was running, I had one nozzle running at a temperature of like 190 degrees and the other one was either going at 140 or 150 or it shot all the way up to 240. And for PLA, that's not really ideal. So when I did these, I actually put my temperatures in to Kira myself to where I like to have them. And that seemed to work out much better for me. I do like that this was extremely easy to put together. There was only a couple screws on each side and then the brackets on top to mount the filament and the runout sensors. That was pretty much all there was to it other than plugging in some cords. But to me, that's simple. It's, you can tell where they go, so you really don't need a manual for that. I do really like their touchscreen. It's extremely easy to use. It's very responsive. All the buttons work perfectly no matter what you're pushing. Inserting the filament, moving it around, and depending on which mode you want to work in, whether you want mirror mode, duplicate, dual, or single mode, you can pick which extruder you want to use. So to me, everything is laid out really nicely. You can see the temperatures of both extruders and the hotbed. And I do like when you go into print, if you want to print something and you click print, it does remind you that you are in a certain mode. So right now it says I'm in single mode. Now, if I wanted this to be in dual mode or I had a model that was in dual mode, I'd have to go back and make sure that I click dual. So it does remind you on certain things what you want to do before you go ahead and hit print. I also really like that the build plate is removable, which makes it that much easier to remove your pieces when you're done. I think on the last solo that I used, it did have a glass bed. And to me, you're just risking chipping it away or you might have to use hairspray or something just to keep it glued down better. But with these removable plates, it makes it so much easier to remove your pieces. And I think it just sticks better to the surface. I do really like that it comes with the SD card and the little flash drive to insert it into. So you can hook this up to your computer if you don't have an SD card slot on your computer. And it also comes with a cord if you want to hook it up directly to your computer and into the machine itself. So overall, I think this is a really good machine. I like the fact that it has dual extruders and you have duplicate mode. Basically, you're getting two machines in one. I think the prints come out really nice. I think some things could be a little bit better. And it's not the best machine I've used. It's also not the worst machine I've used. And I think if I tweak a few settings, I can make these prints come out even better. But yeah, overall, I think it's a solid machine. Everything that you're getting with it is worth it, especially if at the price point of $4.99, you can't really go wrong. Well, that's gonna be it for today, everybody. I will put a link down in the description on where you can pick up this machine. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below, ring the bell, get notified of all the new videos that come out. And as always, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.